59 yard pass to Demarcus Robinson on Sunday to give him 50 passing touchdowns this season. Came as a big surprise to Chiefs punter Dustin Colquitt. Take a listen. And now back to back drops by Conley and Kelsey makes it third and long and really puts him in a tough spot. Third and ten, the home. Straight drop. Stepping up and throwing long. He has a man downfield and he's got it. Demarcus Robinson. Wow. This is unreal. I mean, I thought for sure I was gonna punt. I gotta get my gloves. This is ridiculous, man. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is crazy. Are you guys kidding me? Are you kidding? What? It took me a while to figure out that it was him that was talking. Oh yeah, it was he because he, yes, he thought he's the punter. Yeah. So it's third and long from the, from their own eleven. He's like, I'm gonna have to go punt, and now he has to run all the way to the other side of the field because he's the holder for the extra <laughs> point. Such, such a punter, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wally looking like Willie Beeman out there. <laughs> Beeman, I told you to get your helmet 20 <laughs> seconds ago. He was gonna. In his, he doesn't need the gloves to punt. He thought he was gonna be punting. That was a great moment for Mahomes to eclipse the 50 touchdown yeah. mark. He had just gone over 5,000 yards passing. That was, I mean, that was his final touchdown pass of what will be, should be a unanimous MVP season, will be an MVP if, season if, for Patrick Mahomes. If he can take this thing and keep this momentum, a legend, oh, a star's already been born, but a legend is born if he's able to go to the Super Bowl and do some magic. Last quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs to win a playoff game in Arrowhead was a different legend. His name was Joe Montana yeah. 25 years ago. Pat Mahomes is going to have an opportunity in about 12 days to put his name, add his name to that very short list. All right, moving on. Time for stories to start your morning. The NFL playoffs are here, and Vegas gives the New Orleans Saints the best odds to win Super Bowl 53. All right, Nick, listen closely. The Saints are plus 225, which means if you bet 100 bucks, you win 225. Good job, Jeff. Let me go through that one more time. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. All right, Bart, you agree the Saints should be the favorites to win it all? I think so because they have the, you know, they, they got a, a style that can travel even though it's going to go through the Superdome, but they have, you know, Super Bowl experience and they have playmakers at every level, whether it's offensively, defensively, they can run, ground and pound you, they can take the air out of the game, but also they can beat you over the top. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, if Ted Ginn can really, you know, provide what they need, that deep threat, that explosive player, because Michael Thomas is a good player, but he's not the vertical threat that Ted Ginn can present and open everything up it, in the middle. It's not surprising the two biggest favorites are the one seeds. They should be the biggest favorites. The Saints are the top favorite, the Chiefs right after them. What the Saints have that the Chiefs don't is they don't have a glaring weakness. The right. Chiefs have a glaring weakness. It's not their history, it's their defense. The Saints should be the favorite. I think most people would be very surprised if the Saints don't at least make it to the Super Bowl. I don't know if the same can be said about any team out of the AFC. Yeah. All right, sticking with the NFL, yesterday four more teams fired their coaches. So now the Dolphins, Broncos, Bengals, and Cardinals have head coaching vacancies, bringing the grand total to eight teams. Nick, what's your reaction to a quarter of the league having head coaching vacancies? That's uh, no problem. These teams are just going to go to the head coaching tree, walk <laughs> off a guy. I mean, where do, they, where do they think these good coaches are going to come from? And what they did in Arizona with Steve Wilkes yeah, that was is an embarrassment. To fire a guy after one year when he, he his quarter, quarterback. well, and the quarterback he thought he was going to play got hurt. Sam Bradford got hurt. You have, so you have Josh surprise, Rosen, who's not Very right, shocked. who's not ready yet. And to fire him after one year, it's ridiculous. Like, I don't know where these great coaches are going to come from. I know that this is where we're at. Adam Gase gets fired and immediately goes to the top of the list of right. available candidates because there aren't enough head coaches to go around, evidently. It's just the, the good old boys club, and it's rarely any new blood infused into head coaching. Usually, you, you go from coordinator to coach, back to coordinator, back to position coach, back to head coach. And it just goes on and on, and eventually you get cycled out with the Brian Billicks, with the fossils of the world, but then you continue to come back. Hell, throw Rex's name in there. Might as well. Re Rex, I think, will take either Miami job. He wanted the Miami <laughs> college job. It's <laughs> gone now. Oh, now the head coach job. All right, on to the NBA, where James Harden has been on fire. Old school NBA jam, Nick. He dropped 43 last night. I actually knew what that was. Uh, giving fire. his fourth straight 40-point game. So the Rockets have now won 10 of their last 11. Nick, put Harden's hot streak in perspective for us. I mean, it's as far as scoring-wise, it is. I tweeted this last night. It's it's, it's accurate. 
in modern NBA history, you can count on less than one hand how many guys have done this over this long of a stretch. If he's he's done it, Jordan did it in the late 80s, and Kobe did it in his 35 point per game season. Like that's the list of guys who have done this basically in the modern NBA. And he's, by the way, doing it while averaging double, nearly double digit assists. His team is winning. It is as good of an offensive stretch over a month of basketball as we have seen since Wilt Chamberlain. You can make the argument that he could have been the MVP for the last three seasons. Yeah, I think people are really starting to, to accept his game and understand you know, what he brings to the table. The fact that he's able to be a, a scoring point guard, so to speak. Just imagine you know, if they would have been the first big three and they would have kept him instead of going with Serge Ibaka. Yeah. And what could, they could have had in OKC. They messed up. All right, let's talk about LeBron James for a second. Still one of the game's greatest players in year 16. That's according to basketball pundits. But it's also according to LeBron James, apparently. He recently laid out what he believes was his defining moment in the NBA. He was beating the Warriors in the 2016 finals. Here's what LeBron said that moment meant to him. That one so, right there made me the greatest player of all time. For That's so what many I felt. reasons. I was super, super ecstatic to win one for Cleveland because of the 52-year drought. Like, I was ecstatic. Like, obviously, I showed that, that the first wave of emotion was when y'all ever once saw me crying. Like, that was all for 52 years of everything in sports going on in Cleveland. And then after I stopped, I was like, that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. You know, everybody was just talking how they were the greatest team of all time. Like, it was the greatest team to ever assemble. And for us to come back, you know, the way we came back in that fashion, I was like, you did, you did something special. That's probably one of the only times in my career I felt like, oh, shit. like you did something special. I haven't had really had time to really like sit back and think, but that, that was the moment. All right, Nick, you agree with LeBron? That, Would you look back on that and say that was the moment? That's the exact moment. And he's exactly right, because up until that run, Le LeBron was already, as far as individual statistics, on pace to become probably the greatest individual statistical player ever. It's going to be him, Kareem, and Wilt. Like, that was it. But what he didn't have was the overall team success. And what that game seven of that 2016 NBA Finals did was it cemented or put a cap on the greatest five-year run any basketball player has ever had. Like, we, here's the five year run. He ended the original big three in Boston with a 45, 15, and five on the road down 3 2 in the Eastern Conference Finals, and then beat the team that Bart was talking about could have become the big three, KD, Russ, and Harden, in the NBA Finals. The next year, his team won 27 straight games. He won not only MVP again for the fourth time, but game seven of the NBA Finals hit the jump shot to seal it in the 37 and 12 game. The following year, went back to the finals, averaged 28 a game on 57%, and the guy guarding him got finals MVP. Five year run ever? Yeah, tell me a better five year run. How about MJ from 90 to 98? Okay, but that's here's Running, the run. Right, and he that's took a year years. off. If he didn't take a year off, he would have won seven in a row. Okay, well, so so find me find me the five years, Bart. And let's talk about the the assist that he got from the NBA because they suspended you know they suspended uh, Draymond? Draymond Green. How about that? You one? You know, it's a really good point because the game without Draymond, he scored 41 points, and then Draymond was back for Game Six and he scored 41 points, and Draymond was there for Game Seven and he had a triple double to win it. It would have never went that far. If you know the NBA, well, tell Draymond to keep his they hands put, they put himself. one in. They oh, put okay. one out, man. Come but, on. But you said, least, I give him some credit because he took Cleveland. You know, he won a championship for Cleveland, mm -hmm. which that we know how difficult that is. But him saying he's the greatest player of all time, come on. Man. Well, you, I mean, you said come on, you, you mentioned Jordan. Jordan didn't have a five year stretch better than that. There's no five year stretch any player has ever had Listen, where they've won more than three well, finals are we, MVPs. Are we both using there isn't one? Are we both using this, the, the same things to determine what makes the best player? Are, you're using it's, more it's staff not numbers, and you're using man. You talk about fluffed up so numbers, man. Of course, it's a different game. It's a different era. Okay. So of course you can put up more numbers and more statistics, especially when you're the biggest player on the court and nobody can't stop you and you can run through. Yeah, I mean, MJ played in an era where it was more skill, I believe, in the NBA per player. And it was a more of a physical type of game. It was a more slowed down pace. And listen, how so many, how many, how many, tell me this. I just want to make sure I